Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. For today's video we are actually going to be diving into how to build a website or blog for your business. This was actually requested by somebody and honestly I think it's a great next video to just kind of dive into because it is a good start for your business. It's really important to have a website to showcase your work or showcase your product or showcase your voice, whatever it might be. This is a good next first step when it comes to that. So the first step in doing that is to know what your brand and your niche is. So obviously I talk way more deep into this in the previous videos, so I'm not going to get into it, but it's really important for you to know that because that's what's going to jumpstart you into what your website is going to even be about and what it's going to look like. Now if you're trying to create a website and create a blog on your own without any like extra help from a graphic designer or something like that, then this is even more important for you to know because it's going to play a part into what the aesthetic of your website is going to look like and what you yourself want to represent your brand or your voice, whatever it might be, through a website. So if you're wanting to have a graphic designer kind of come in, website designer, then that's amazing. I I mean, if you're able to invest in that, I would say that's a great, great, great start because you're going to, in a sense, have a jump start in comparison to somebody who's trying to do it on their own. I'm not saying it's bad to do it on your own. I think that there's value and there's a great like learning curve that comes with that as well. But having a graphic designer or web designer is going to help you immensely in these beginning stages. So if you're doing it on your own, you need to figure out what you want it to look like and just kind of have an idea of that in your head or start talking with a graphic or web designer and figure out what you want the basis of your website to be. And that's really just going to be dependent on what it is that you want to do. So if you're trying to be a wedding photographer, then you want to make sure that you pick a site that is going to showcase your work well and showcase what it is you do and be able to speak to that. If you're selling a product, you want to make sure it's centered around the product. And if you're starting a blog, you want to make sure that it's centered around your voice and what you are able to offer these people that you are wanting to speak to. So that's the first thing that I would say. The second thing that I would say is for you to know your voice. And this is more specific to like a blog, just because it's really important to have a direction and have a idea of where you want to go with your blog and what it is that's part of the niche so that you're not just kind of randomly spewing things out into the world, hoping that they might, you know, catch by somebody. And do you want to be a fashion blogger? Do you want to be a food blogger? Do you want to be a travel blogger? Like what kind of blogger do you want to be? And I mean there are things like lifestyle bloggers probably cover a good chunk of all those others that I just listed. So you can in a sense even create your own but it would be good to kind of pick a uh, category or something that you could place yourself under um, just for SEO purposes which we'll go over a little bit later. But figure out what your voice is going to be and find the category that fits into that um, because that's going to help you. Now, again, if you're doing this on your own, you're going to have to figure out what exactly you're going to say on your blog or website and what the homepage is going to look like, what the about me is going to look like. And when I say look like with this point, I mean like what it's going to say. Like what are the words that you're going to use to explain that particular page. Because let me tell you, the copy, which is what it's called, the words on your site, the copy is so crucial and so important in making sure that you're reaching your audience and that they are listening to you basically and that they want to come back for more because your voice is what's bringing them in. So if you're doing that on your own, you really need to figure that out and have a good understanding of that. Or you can hire a copywriter, which again just kind of plays into the web design. It's a jump start in a sense just because they're going to help you find your voice and help you find what you're trying to say. Because sometimes I understand it can be hard to figure out what you want to say on your own. And if you tend to be the type of person who's not good with words, that could be even harder for you. So, but if you do hire a copywriter, they're going to help you immensely with that. They're going to be able to really help you hone in on your voice and what it is that you're trying to say. So if you do it on your own, you really need to think about that and figure out what it is that you're trying to say. If you hire a copywriter, then obviously just start that conversation with them and figure out what the process is with them to get that up and going for you. Now, once you kind of have the basis of the site set up, you have a template that you're using, you know, you have the, the basic wording that you're trying to convey on your website. You just want to make sure that you make it extremely simple. And I can't stress this enough, guys. 
you might be able to know the ins and outs of how your website works and it might be easy for you to assume that other people would know how to navigate your site as well, but that's not necessarily true. I'm going to go over my website as an example, not saying it's the best thing ever, I'm just saying I'm going to use it as an example to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about a little bit later into this video. But in general, you just want to keep it so simple for people. Have a home page, have an about page, have a contact page, have a blog page, have you know a portfolio page. If you have something else that you want to you know really showcase, then add that in too. But usually those are the first five things that tend to just be good to have on your home tab for your website. Um, because that's going to keep it, again, simple for customers coming to you. They're going to know how to navigate. They're going to know what those all mean. Because if you try and make it some artsy-fartsy thing or try naming it some crazy thing that you might understand but that people might not, you'd be surprised how many people will just click away from a website if they don't know what to do next. So you really want to simplify it. And that even goes into call to actions on different pages. So a call to action is just a button that you have on your website that gives your your client or gives the person visiting your site a reason to click it like what is it that they need next in this scenario so like on a home page if they're scrolling and they see the portfolio section then my call to action is going to say click here to check out the most recent love story that I photographed it's a it's a call to action it's asking them to act by clicking this button in order to see the next part of your website. So you wanna flood your website with as many call to actions as you can. I genuinely, I mean, I guess there is a way to overkill it, but I would say for the most part, it's safe to have a lot. Don't feel like you should only have one per page. Like, if you're having sections on certain parts of your pages, then put a call to action at the bottom of each of those sections, because again, you have to make it simple and clear for the visitor to know what to do next and to keep them on your site and not navigate away. So now the next tip does have to do with SEO and I kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier, but SEO means search engine optimization. You know when you go to Google and you type in how to make a pancake, the results that show up on Google's results the top ones that show up are going to have the best SEO in comparison to the people who show up in the like thousandth page because they have purposely put thought into how their results would come up if it's pinned with that search term. Now the search term that you use, how to make a pancake, that's called keywords because those are the keywords that people are going to be putting into Google in order to find results for how to make a pancake. So you want to be smart about what you name your blog posts and what you put as image keywords for your images in order to make sure that you are one of the more top results when it comes to SEO. Now it's really hard and I think that it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of forethought and a lot of help from outside people to get you into in some of the top results for whatever search query that you may be putting in. Now there are some search queries that have way more results than some other ones. If you try to be in a result for some of the lower popular, like not as popular queries, but that still hit your topic, that's a great way to kind of strategize there. But there's nothing wrong with wanting to show up in one of the more popular searches. For example, San Diego Wedding Photographer is a very broad search. There's going to be so many results when it comes to that. But if you say a specific location in San Diego and say like La Jolla, wedding photographer, then the results are going to be way slimmer than just the broad San Diego. But that doesn't mean you can't use the San Diego one, I'm just saying there are differences in results and the amount that shows up for each of those different ones. And it's okay to be broad, but also think a little bit specific too, just so that you can have some sort of a result when somebody puts in La Jolla wedding photographer. At least in some way, you should be able to pop up as opposed to if they were to just do, you know, Southern California or San Diego. So a few tips to kind of do that is with blog titles. So to kind of help with this, I'm going to be sharing my screen with my computer so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about and you can see a visual for what I'm trying to do. So on my website, if you go to, let's do portfolio first before we hit the blog. So if you're, if you're looking here at my website, then you're going to see that all of my posts have some sort of location attached with it, as well as what that post is about, like what the content of that post is. So for example, I'm going to scroll down basically to this one, 
It says Griffith Park Elopement, and then Los Angeles Elopement Photography, and then the couple's name. Now, um, if it's something more specific, like the one next to it, we shot their engagement session at the um, California Citrus State Historic Park in Riverside. And so I put California State Citrus Park Engagement as well as Riverside Engagement Photography and then the couple's names. So you can, you can make this as specific or as broad as you want it to, but again, I, do, I would suggest having some sort of specificity first and then kind of talking about the broader one and then what the content of it is. So, for example, this Torrey Pines one is Torrey Pines State Beach Engagement, San Diego Engagement Photographers, AJ and Kelly. So what I did there was I, I put it pretty specific to the exact location that we were at, Torrey Pines. But then I also included a little bit of a broader one with the San Diego engagement photographers and then I included the couple's name. Now within each of these posts, let me scroll down to that one and click edit. Um, again, I'll go over what site I'm using and stuff like that kind of more towards the end. I'm using Squarespace so that's what this is showcasing. Okay, so on this particular one, so we're on, let me scroll down and find it so that you at least know which one I'm talking about. Let me go to older. Okay, so I'm talking about this particular one right here. So the Industrial Chic 32 North Brewing Wedding. So what I did there was I took the style of the wedding as well as the venue location of the wedding and I just put wedding at the end of it. So it was an industrial chic type wedding and it was at 32 North Brewing in San Diego. So I said industrial chic 32 North Brewing wedding. Then for the more broader one, I said San Diego wedding photographers and then the couple's name. So if you click on it and you kind of see right here in the bottom left corner, you'll see tags and categories. Categories is mainly for navigation on the website. It's to just help the couple or whoever's visiting know what category that falls under and if they I have like wedding, elopement, engagement, couple. So like if an engaged couple comes to my website and they want to find engagement sessions, they could technically click engagement and then all of my engagement sessions would show up. That's category, pretty self-explanatory. But tags, now tags are where the good stuff happens. So all of these tags right here are based off of keywords that I think people would use to search for either this kind of wedding or for wedding photography in San Diego in general. So I put industrial chic wedding vibes, I put 32 North Brewing, I put 32 North Brewing wedding photos, brewery wedding, wow that's a tongue twister, brewery wedding inspo, brewery wedding inspiration, brewery wedding vibes, brewery wedding photography, San Diego wedding photography, San Diego wedding photographers, San Diego engagement photo inspo, San Diego engagement photo inspiration, San Diego, I'm not going to keep going but you get the gist, you're literally going to put into those tags all of the search queries that you might think people would put into to find this, to find what you are trying to put in front of their faces. So that's the blog titles, that's the keywords. These tags right here are also keywords. It's the copy of the blog. So within the blog post itself, you should be talking about where this took place, what venue it was at, and the general vibe of the wedding again. And it doesn't have to be obvious. You don't have to like type San Diego wedding drug for like you can say, John and Sammy are both native to the San Diego area and they wanted to have a awesome San Diego wedding at a local brewery named 32 North Brewing. Now within that of itself, I've already hit a few tags that I talked about within that last little point. I said 32 North Brewing in the copy of the blog. I said San Diego wedding, I said that it was in San Diego. So you can easily just kind of bring that into the flow of the blog to just help again so that when Google crawls your site, if somebody puts into Google, you know, 32 North Brewery wedding, then because you not only tagged this post as 32 North Brewery wedding, but also put that into the blog itself and the title, Google's gonna say, okay, this is definitely something that should be resulting with this query that this person put in. So the more that you can put those keywords into your blog post, the title, the tags, then the easier, not always better because again, there are thousands of people, millions of people in this world who are like SEO fanatics and they have finagled this down to a T. So just because you don't show up, like let's say you do this for a year and you still don't necessarily show up in like the first 10 or something like that, don't get discouraged. The more you do it, the more Google is going to realize and the more your result is going to show up. And honestly, I'm going to touch on this in a second, but having the image have keywords as well is super helpful too because 
even though you might put, you know, just a normal Google search, 32 New York Brewery Wedding, what shows up as far as like the actual clickable links, like websites, doesn't necessarily have you. That doesn't mean that the photos that show up in that first few sliders can't be yours. I have found that my photos tend to show up before my actual website does with SEO. And so don't forget to put keywords into your images as well. Now, if you're asking how do you do that, Usually with a website or a blog or whatever, if you're inputting each photo individually into the blog post, you can usually go into the photo settings and it will give you the option of having like keywords or it might say like advanced. Just find the button that's gonna give you the closest thing to keywords or keywords itself. And then you can input the same thing. So the tags and the keywords I kind of use interchangeably. So those same tags I can put into the photo as well so that if somebody searches, my photos show up as well, not just my website. And I would just say even for bloggers and blogging in general, even if you're not necessarily offering a service or a product, still include images in your blog posts and still have image keywords to again just help you become a result when somebody puts in a request into Google that has to do with your niche. So those are kind of like the four bigger areas. Again, there's SEO isn't just a one, you know, one and done type thing. There are so many different levels to it and that's pretty much anything in business. But those are the four main things that I've been using to implement and that I have found have helped me and have actually given me some inquiries from Google because they have found me through certain search terms and stuff like that. The next thing that I would say, once you kind of get a handle on SEO and you're good to go there, is just make sure that you showcase your work. So again, if we're on here and we go to my website, the very first thing that's going to pop up is photos because, hey, I'm a wedding photographer. So you'll see kind of like a slider here with photos that will rotate. I have a little bit of a slower connection, so you might not see the photo actually rotate. There we go. Um, so those just kind of rotate over, you know, certain duration of time and whatnot. If the viewer wants to, they can see that there's, you know, signals here on the sides that could have them switch through it faster if they wanted to. Then when they scroll down, they see a quick little blurb about the focus of what I do in a sense. Now, obviously, there's multiple focuses of what I do, but this just happens to be one particular blurb. And my copywriter who worked with me on this um, helped me hone in on what it was that I was actually focusing on when it comes to wedding photography, and that's obviously the marriage of the couple. That's what's most important. So on this homepage, what matters most? There you go. And you see it says, what matters most is you, your relationship, your day, your experience, your celebration, your marriage, and then a quick little blurb. And then boom, what did I say? Right off the bat, there's a call to action. Put your mind at ease and click here. But let's say they keep scrolling. Oh, now they see recent work. That's amazing. Now when they click on one of these, it's going to take them directly to that specific blog post. But if they click this call to action right here that says more photos please, it's going to take them to my portfolio page where you can see the categories are right here. But other than that, it's just the entire, all of those categories put together with the most recent being first up there in the upper left corner. But they can see all my most recent work there. Going back to home here. So then if they continue to keep scrolling, oh look, who's this person? The person behind this business, behind wedding photography. Hey, I'm Kate. Don't go crazy here. Don't, I'm not going to, there's, whew. Websites is like a whole other video in and of itself when it comes to like what actually you should be saying here, but just know, don't talk about the fluff, don't, th don't talk about things that you like, but just make sure that what you're putting here is, isn't just fluff. Like give them some sort of substance. And you know, a little bit of these are more fun. When I say fluff, I just mean like don't just say like, I'm going to capture your day. Like that's that's not specific enough. That's not giving them enough information about you for them to know like, okay, well, what makes you different than this other person who says that they can capture my day too. So like something that I said here was that a huge part of my business is that I am a Christian. So I said, loves Jesus and strives to serve as he served. We'll obsess over timelines and in and out. This gives the impression that, okay, she likes to be organized. She's pretty a type in a sense and I can trust her when it comes to making sure that all the shots that happen on the wedding day are going to be timely and efficient and she's not going to go over time at least as much to her ability. And then the and in and out is just a fun little thing there to just kind of humanize me. 
Then it says, so optimistic it hurts. That gives them a sense of, okay, this person isn't going to constantly be dragging me down. They're going to be looking for, you know, the glass half full situations instead of glass half empty. They're going to be an encourager. They're going to be joyful. They're, you get the picture. So then, honor to death to be your photographer. A huge part of my business as well is just the fact that people even choose me to be their wedding photographer. And so when somebody does book me, I do use the term, I'm humbled to be a photographer, I'm honored to be a photographer, because it really is an honor, guys, to be chosen for such a special day and to be the one that they trust to capture these moments. So this is just a quick glimpse based off of a few sentences. Again, I hired a copywriter to help me hone in on this and she helped come up with these sentences to make sure that we were really hitting. It wasn't too fluffy, but it wasn't so deep to where they were like, eh, I don't really want to read this. They want to read more. So look, here's a call to action. The real, real Kate Garcia. That's me. Then if they kept scrolling, they would see a quick little blurb here about, again, it's all about you. It's focused on you. Quick call to action, tell me more, and then a little something for everybody. This just kind of goes over a quick general pricing blurb, but also it takes them to my services page. So photos, video, engagement, blah, 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 blah. I've got a package for it. Photography starts here. Check out my pricing. So that will take them to my services. Then I have reviews. This is really important. If you are offering a service or a product, you need to make sure that you get reviews from the people who have worked with you because that's going to validate you in their eyes and it's going to provide credibility to your name so that they can know like okay she actually delivers on what she says she delivers and then again another call to action and then just the the bottom part so that was a very very quick um look at peek at you know my website and what it looks like in regards to call to actions and copy and what i say and what i am offering within those you know that first minute or so that they're on my homepage. But, quick little thing, I'm pretty sure, I've heard this said before by other uh, business owners, but I'm pretty sure people can make an impression about your site in the first, like, three seconds or something like that, and then within the first ten seconds, they know whether or not they want to stay or move on to a different site. So you want to make sure that you hook them in as soon as you can with enticing work, with copy that, like, makes them like, oh my gosh, this is amazing, I want to learn more, and with actually following through with what you say that you actually offer. So if you offer a more documentary style, then you want to showcase work that is more documentary and not ones that are all posy and stiff all the time because that's a break in your brand. If you want me to go even more deeper into a website and really dig deep into why I did each of these things and why I have all these tabs and yada yada yada, I'm happy to do that. But now I kind of want to focus more on the blog side. Obviously, a huge part of blogging is that SEO, the blog title, keywords, copy of the blog, and the image keywords. But some of the more popular blog, I guess, templates or websites I know of is WordPress. Technically, any website platform can be a blog, but I've heard that WordPress is the best in regards to SEO and in regards to like actually showing up in results. So I would honestly, I would probably, if I was doing a blog, I would probably do WordPress. But again, do your own research, figure out which one's going to work best for you, just in terms of just doing your research. Like just... Literally Google you know, blog sites for 2020 or something like that. But I'm looking specifically at WordPress. The nice thing about a blog is that you can actually have an email list. You can have this with any website or blog. It's not just for, you know, specific to bloggers, but you can have an email list which will, you know, send out either once a month or once a week or whatever you want it to be. Just either new content or the new post or a promotion or a special or like something that you might be selling or something like that. So I would definitely take advantage of email lists and use social media to kind of promote that in a sense. So when you start your blog, make sure that you have a social media platform to back that up because uh, even though you can technically build a blog by word of mouth, it's way easier and more efficient to have help with social media and kind of promote your blog there as well. I mean, if you wanted to, you could even go so far as to advertise for your blog and get some people through there. But having an email list is super helpful. You can even have that as an incentive for them to kind of like get to know you on social media on your blog. And you can say, you know, I'm going to send over a freebie next week when I launch my blog. Feel free to put your email in or DM me your email and I can get that to you. Boom, they're already on the email list. But when you're on your blog platform, you want to make sure that you have a little section that says newsletter subscription, a little box for them to put their email in and subscribe to whichever newsletter you choose on the back end based on wherever it's at on your site. So like if you want them to subscribe to your blog posts, then you can put 
a little blurb with some words that says you get notified every time I post a new blog, put your email here, blah, blah, blah. Or if you're selling a product and you want people to be aware of new promotions, you can put a little blurb with a newsletter that's specific to the promotions campaign, basically, and they can put in their email to be notified for when all the promotions happen for your specific product. So email lists are great for blogs. It's a great way to get an audience, build an audience, maintain an audience, and all that jazz. Now we're going to look at specific website platforms that you can use for your website. All right, so I personally use Squarespace. Um, I don't think that there's a right or wrong way to create a website. I think that you just need to create one. And then as you grow and as you learn, you can um, switch platforms or do whatever you feel is necessary for your business. I really enjoyed Squarespace because it was a great way for me to just learn how to do it on my own. Again, most of the time when you're first starting out, you don't necessarily have the funds to invest in a web designer or a copywriter and stuff like that. So having a platform that is really friendly and allows you to kind of customize without getting too deep into like coding and stuff like that, um, I think Squarespace is great. But honestly, WordPress is still great too. You can do, let's see, I'm going to go back because this is specifically for blogs. So we could do websites and it will show you, um, you know, different templates and things. Let's browse all the things just to see. And yeah, it shows you obviously plenty of options for what you could use for your website. And honestly, WordPress is still, you know, user friendly too. But again, I just really liked the way Squarespace looked. I liked what it had to offer. And I was able to understand it a little bit more than I was WordPress. Most of the time, most websites give you like a free trial too. So you can almost in a sense test out a few different platforms and see which one you enjoy working with and which one is easiest for you to work with. And then from there, you can just not move forward with the other ones and then move forward and start paying for a website through whatever platform you choose. Um, the other website that I have heard is very beautiful and easy to work with and is pretty customizable is Show It. Again, I haven't personally used this one, but I know a lot of photographers who do use this one. I think this is a little bit, no, because I see like blogs here too. I was going to say, technically, I think they advertise themselves as photographer, like websites for photographers, but I can see like blogs here and stuff too, so I'm sure it's not just that. But there is definitely a lot of site templates here that are pretty specific to photography, um, as you can see here. But yeah, those are the three, oh, also Wix. Um, Wix.com. That was another one that uh, came up as pretty popular and pretty easy to use. But yeah, ultimately you want to just kind of play around with these and see which one's easiest, which one you kind of resonate with basically, and which one you see yourself kind of sticking to at least for a little while. Again, there's nothing wrong with switching platforms. I think that that's kind of normal for the future. And I think probably one day I might switch over to show it just because of the customizable opportunities there. But um, in regards to blogs, like I said, I think WordPress is probably your best bet. I don't know a lot about blogging, but um, again, technically any website you can create a blog and you can utilize to to still use it the same way as WordPress. I've just heard that WordPress is kind of uh, easier to show up in, res in search results than others. Yeah, so that's kind of like a general breakdown in regards to how to start a blog or a website. I know that was still a lot of info, so thank you so much for watching and tuning in all this time. Again, if you need me to go even deeper into like actually building a website and going step by step into why I chose to do and why my copywriter and web designer chose to do what they needed to do in order to create my site, then I can totally do that for you. Just let me know. But that's like a general overview of what I think you should think about and things, steps you should take and all that in regards to building a blog or a website. So I hope that was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below letting me know. Your feedback is so appreciated and it actually really motivates me and helps me to continue with these videos. It can be hard to keep motivation with this if nobody's really responding or honestly if nobody's really even watching my videos because then at that point I'm like, well, I thought I was offering help, but if nobody's taking advantage of it and actually watching, then... So the fact that I did receive feedback and that this was something that somebody wanted to learn about and know is helpful. So please let me know if you do want to learn something. I am happy to make a video about it. So like and subscribe. 
and I will see you guys next time. I know my posting schedule has still been a little bit weird. I think I'm just going to post when I can for right now and just keep you guys updated on when via Instagram. I obviously still want to do Monday and Friday. I do. I think I kind of lost motivation this last week because again, nobody was really like watching anything or giving me feedback about it. So it's hard, you know, it's hard if you don't get that feedback. So the fact that I did get feedback from multiple people that they either wanted to learn from me or wanted a video specific to something was really helpful and very encouraging. So that's why I made this. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.